Pain with sitting is a common complaint with proximal hamstring tendinopathy. In this video, we'll go over why the proximal hamstring is aggravated by sitting, why stretching might actually be helpful for dealing with it, and then also an exercise progression to help decrease the pain with sitting. When we look at what causes tendinopathy, one of the main contributors is overload. And there's two different types of load that you should be aware of when we're looking at proximal hamstring tendinopathy. Tensile loading is the one that's most commonly thought of, and this is what occurs with walking and running, where we actually just have tension that's placed on the tendon. But with the proximal hamstring tendon, we should also be aware of compressive loads. So as the hip goes into flexion, the proximal hamstring tendon will be compressed against that ischial tuberosity, this part of the bone here, and that can lead to similar changes as tensile overloading. However, we should be aware that it's tensile load plus compressive loads, as compressive loads by themselves don't seem to be sufficient to cause those same structural changes that we see with proximal hamstring tendinopathy. And the reason why this is important is that hip flexion can be an irritating position for proximal hamstring tendinopathy, but this doesn't mean that it's causing structural damage to the tendon by being in that position. The way that you can think about this is that if I pinch my skin, I have some pain and it's honestly not very pleasant. However, once I stop, the pain stops and there's no tissue damage to my skin. So just because we're in hip flexion and it's painful doesn't mean that it's actually causing damage to the tendon. So looking at how to approach pain with sitting, we wanna gradually expose that proximal hamstring tendon to more compressive loads under low load scenarios so that we can build up the tolerance to something like sitting. And when we think about bringing a tissue, either a muscle or a tendon, to end range with low loads, that's the same as actually stretching. And so even though stretching can be an irritating position or movement for proximal hamstring tendinopathy, we wanna gradually start to add those compressive loads. And so there's different ways that we can do this so that the tendon isn't as irritated as just doing a simple hamstring stretch. The first exercise is a quadruped rock. So to perform, we're gonna start in a quadruped position with our hands underneath our shoulders and our knees underneath our hips. And from this position, we're gonna slowly rock our hips back towards our heels and then come back up. And so what we're doing here is that as we go into hip flexion, we're adding a little bit of compressive load to that proximal hamstring tendon without much tensile load. And so we wanna just perform this nice and slow. If we have some pain during this movement, we don't have to go through the full range. So if I have pain here, I could just slowly start here and then build our way back into more and more hip flexion. And then we can also add in our time that we're exposing the tendon to those compressive loads. So as you notice in the beginning here, I'm just kind of doing a mobilization, rocking slowly back and forth. But what I can do is I can actually sit into that child's pose position here. So now we're just increasing the time that that tendon is being compressed. Once we're able to tolerate that position, then we can add a little bit of load here. And so we'll do a downward dog. So I'll start in a plank position, and then I'm just gonna lift my hips up towards the ceiling, and then come back to that high plank position. So as we bring our hips up towards the ceiling here, we're just adding that compressive load under a little bit more tensile load as well. So we're just gradually exposing that tendon to more and more load in hip flexion. The next exercise is a kneeling hinge. It's a way that we can further increase the loads on that proximal hamstring tendon under more hip flexion. So to perform, we're gonna start in this kneeling position. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend our trunk forward towards the ground and then slowly come back up when you do this, you are going to push your hips back just a little bit. It's very hard to keep your thigh vertical here, otherwise you're gonna fall forward. So it's okay to push the hips back a little bit, but we're really trying to get that torso down towards the ground here. And we want all the movement to come from the hips, so we can put our hands on our stomach and our back. And as we do this, we wanna to try to keep those parallel to each other and not just round like this, because otherwise we're not getting much movement in the hips, we're getting it all in the low back. So here, and then we're going to bend forward and then come back up. And at this point, we have a couple of different exercise options that we can use to further increase the loads on the proximal hamstring tendon with hip flexion. Of course, we could do a traditional deadlift, and this is probably the more challenging of the exercises when it comes to compressive loads on that proximal hamstring tendon. And there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. We can use an exercise band, a kettlebell, or some sort of weight, or we can use a backpack for load if we're doing these at home. And to perform the deadlift, what we're doing is we're moving primarily through the hips and we're pushing our hips back towards the wall behind us as we lower the weight down towards the ground. And then we just reverse the motion so that we're extending the hips and coming back to that upright position. And the goal of these isn't necessarily to load them as heavy as possible, like we're training for some sort of weightlifting competition. 
The goal is that we're loading the hip under hip flexion so they can tolerate compressive loads for whatever we need to do, like sitting. For the exercise that most closely resembles sitting, we can perform a squat, and we can start off with a body weight squat, going as low as we feel comfortable and then gradually increasing our depth as our tolerance improves. And then we can increase the load by either adding a weight or a backpack so that we have a little bit more load. Generally, we want to perform these fairly slow so that each rep is over six to eight seconds. So that's three to four seconds down and then three to four seconds back up. If we want to further increase the compressive loads on that proximal hamstring tendon, we can actually add a pause at the bottom of the squat so that we're increasing the time that that proximal hamstring tendon is being compressed. So hopefully this exercise progression for pain with sitting with proximal hamstring tendinopathy was helpful. If it was, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. If you want to see more of my content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. I'll also have a video over here if you want to learn more about proximal hamstring tendinopathy. I'll see you in the next video.